Well, it's a crack, everyone. It's Nathan here, aka the Rambling Kern and head instructor of Kern School Combat. So, um, this week's video is a follow on to last week's video. So, if you want a bit of context to what I'm going to be talking about, you can have a look at that. But uh, basically, this video is a um, interesting one, um, in my opinion, on what became known as uh, the case of Tanistry. Um, so for those who don't know, Tanistry was a system of governance used in Ireland, uh, basically based around how land was managed and dealt out. Um, and a case was brought in front of the um, English uh, courts, essentially, in 1608. Um, basically, while the case itself was a land dispute, the overall case itself became a case about whether or not Tanistry as a system was legal and legally binding and should it be adhered to or should it be abolished. Um, and I think that's quite a fascinating thing. Often a lot of people when they think about Irish culture, Irish customs um, or various other cultures uh, that have been colonised, often they kind of view the dramatic decline in those that's often done through violence and uh, war. However, oftentimes these things are done through litigation, basically, through the courts and through the legal system. Um, things are slowly abolished, slowly eroded away, and, you know, uh, quote-unquote, better terms and uh, better systems as such are, are kind of enforced. Um, and that's where Tan Street comes in. So, just, I will link a um, article in the description of this video that will actually have um, um, citations and actual quotations from the case itself. Um, so this case, like I said, it was put up in front of the courts in 1608 and I'm going to uh, use terminology and actual quotes from the case itself and um, hence I want to have this in front of me to make sure I say it right. But just to kind of define what exactly uh, um, Tanistry was, and then this case was reported by, uh, reported on by an individual called John Davies, and the way that he explains Tanistry is basically that the ultimate proprietary ship of land lay in the extended kin group, and the allocation of individual allotments of land was temporary and subject to periodic res redistribution. Thus, Tanistry and Gabelkind were construed by Davies and other English jurists as constituting, constituting a system of law which lay outside the jurisdiction of royal writ. So that as a result led to the case in 1608 which like I said became known as the case of Tanistry. It was referred to uh, the court of King's Bench from the Presidency uh, Court of Munster and by this stage, supposedly, Town Street had already been dealt with and abolished and gotten rid of, but this was putting in a legal framework to fully abolish it so that no further cases could kind of come in front of the courts and they, did, they didn't have to deal with it and could it could be completely um, abolished from that point hence. So, just a note on the reporting of the case itself. Um, all of it was reported by this one individual, Sir John Davies, um, and he was the Solicitor General, later the Attorney General uh, for Ireland, who appeared on behalf of the defendant. However, in his reporting, there's no real clear distinction um, made by him between the plaintiff's arguments, the defendant's arguments, and the judgment itself. He just kind of writes it all basically as, as one kind of block of text um, and doesn't really um, discern much between them. Um, as the case itself is kind of argued several times, um, the judgment and the several judgments kind of given are all kind of uh, mirrored by that. So, the one interesting thing about Tanistry itself was that due to the system that it was, it fell outside of common law, which is what was uh, English law was referred to at the time. So this was viewed as a severe threat to common law, and especially to the crown itself. And um, like I mentioned in the previous video, this system of allocating out lots of land left Irish lords in a very powerful position, especially over their people. Um, and this was something that the crown kind of couldn't really stand by and allow because they didn't have control and ownership over the greater part, let's say, of the land. 
the lords did and they allocated it out to their men and they could use that land to bring in mercenaries um often this system was used uh, if we look at like the galloglass and um, people kind of think of them purely as a mercenary force but this allocation of land was used quite often to give them land they then set up kind of familial lineages and became irish themselves and the system was kind of repurposed and reused in that way so the case itself um to get back on track um the case was an action for ejectment and involved um, basically a series of land transfers um, based on the rather complicated family trees that were used at the time. At its most basic, uh, the case involved the question of basically that two uh, competing titles for a particular parcel of land um, between the plaintiff, uh, Murrah McBrien, and the defendant, uh, Donna McTeague Callaghan. Um, now, he was placed as the common law um, inheritor. However, within Tanistry, um, Murrah McBrien was still uh, entitled to land. So that's where the case kind of uh, was put forth and brought forth in front of the courts. Um, and it was basically trying to set out did Tanistry fit within common law? Was it a good fit to be used within common law? And was it um, capable of being upheld within the framework of common law? And like I said, uh, Sir John Davies reports upon this. The land itself was located in County Cork. And um, basically the defendant, um, he kind of argued that because common law was being used and was put in place um, that he was therefore the rightful owner of that land and you know he couldn't be removed um, from the land as such. So like I said I'm going to uh, link the um, documents in the uh, in the description of the video so that you can have a further look and read through this. They're very detailed um, and quite interesting in my opinion. Um, I didn't want to go through them all because otherwise the video would take a few hours <laughs> so you can understand it. But essentially the case itself was brought before the court was written as such um, upon which one main question ariseth, viz. whether the title of the heir at common law, which the defendant hath, or the title of the tanist, which state the lesser of the plaintiff hath, should be preferred, as the case is. And in the discussing of this question, three principal points were moved and argued. One, whether said custom of tanistry was void or not in itself or otherwise abolished by the introduction of common law. Uh, two, admitting that it was a good custom and not to be abolished by common law. Or three, as to the first point, it was objected uh, to the counsel of the plaintiff and that said custom of tanistry, as it is found, is good by the um, rules uh, there within common law. So basically, instead of it being a land dispute between two people, this kind of became almost the modern day equivalent of a referendum um, and a actual trial over the law itself, not necessarily the uh, disruption between these two plaintiffs. Um, so instead of it being uh, plaintiff A and plaintiff B, sorry, plaintiff and defendant, um, one gets the land, one doesn't get the land, this is basically turned into a who um, has the right within the law that is currently there in place to keep their land. Now, for those who aren't familiar, Ireland had a very different system of law at the time. Now, like I said, we had Tanistry, but we also had Breton law. I am not an expert in Breton law. I do know people who are. So in the future, I do hope to do videos on it, but I want to spend my time and go through the system properly so that I can kind of uh, portray a fair um, version of the law. Because like I said, it's a large legal system and it's very very interesting one but obviously one that I want to portray to you appropriately. So the trial itself um, like many of these things reached a, reached a judgment and the court's judgment itself was this. Um, by these rules of the customs in general this particular custom of transfer was examined and first it was resolved that this custom was unreasonably, well beg your pardon, was unreasonable and void uh, for it is against the Commonwealth and goeth utterly in destruction of it. For a Commonwealth cannot subsist without a certain ownership of land 
or if the right of inheritance of land does not rest in some person. And that was the um, outcome of the trial. So the trial itself resulted in that, basically the abolishment of tanistry and the formal placement into law that common law was henceforth the only system to be used. Um, so like I said, I, th I personally find this a very fascinating case because it's an actual legal court case where we have the documents from and the actual um, arguments both of the plaintiffs and the defendant where like any kind of good courtroom drama it plays out but this one with the backdrop of the Desmond Rebellion and the Tudor Conquest of Ireland it is a much grander scale of this kind of ancient law and the system that was used in the country henceforth being abolished basically from this simple land dispute between two relatives it was slowly being abolished but by this date of 1608 it was basically completely removed from law and was viewed to no longer be valid in any form um, i think personally this is very fascinating for that reason um by the mid 1600s most of what we would associate with irish culture and tradition at the time was pretty much outlawed of, of any kind both clothing and um, laws and everything else in between you can see throughout this trial however the real urgency from the english lawmakers to get this law and system i should say removed because it gave too much power to um irish chieftains and it was basically what in some ways kind of led to the tudor um rebellions themselves that you basically had lords who uh, due to the this system of controlling land were able to kind of maintain their own private armies who were beholden only to themselves and could basically do what they wanted um, and it's a really really fascinating case so if you want to have a look at the case itself and kind of further details on it like i said it is in the description and um, if you want to chat to me further or if you have any video suggestions um comment down below if you want to sponsor my work and um, you'll find my patreon um, i have some really interesting uh, plans for this year and some really uh, interesting hikes and kind of outdoor adventures so if you guys want to help with that and um, my patreon is below i also do private videos and one-on-one uh, -on -one discussions on there as well so anything you can do to help is appreciated even if that's just subscribing to the channel i really appreciate all the support everyone's given and um, i really do hope you enjoy uh, these topics i find them quite fascinating i know it's a little bit outside of the, the normal scope of the channel but i think they're uh, pretty fascinating myself and um, once again thank you very much for watching i really do appreciate it and slow.